Welcome back. We split this video up into two parts since it was getting a little long. So we just finished part one. And for part one, we had seen on our whiteboard here, take a look up here on the whiteboard, we knew that the distance for A to B right here was nine units. So I'm going to plug that in. We knew that the distance for B to C was eight units. So we're going to plug that in. We knew the distance for A to C after we did a bunch of work with the Pythagorean theorem was the square root of 145. That's really close to the square root of 144, so I know it's 12.0, 12.1. I'm going to round to the nearest unit today. And because it's to the nearest unit for problem number one or part one, I'm going to just put 12 instead of 12.1 or whatever square root of 145 made. Pause this video. Take a look for part two now where it's a bit more challenging. Welcome back. Um, here we go for part two. I'm going to go ahead and open the drawing, and I'm first going to figure out what are the coordinates for f and g since they didn't provide that. Take a look. What's the coordinates for f? And what are the coordinates for g? Hopefully you saw that f is going to be negative 3 for x, negative 3 for y. It lines up with the negative 3 on the x and the negative 3 on the y. And then we take a look at coordinate g or point g. The coordinates for point g 3 to the right, so that's a positive 3. That's where it lines up with on the x-axis, and positive 5 for y. Once I know the coordinates for f and g, you could build a triangle. You could go ahead and build a right triangle. You could count it, but I'm going to show you an easier method. If I know that f is at negative 3 and 3, and if I know that g is at positive 3 and 5. I can measure how much it will move sideways. That's the negative 3 to positive 3. That's the sideways movement. And how much it moves by the y, the negative 3, all the way to the positive 5. How much it moves up and down is going to be shown by the y change. So let's full screen this whiteboard quick. To get from negative 3 to positive 3, the x is going to change. 3 to get to 0, 3 more to get to positive 3, 3 and 3 gives us 6. So that sideways movement has to be 6 to get from F to G. And the Y value changes from positive, oh sorry, positive, nope, that was a negative 3 that I didn't write down correctly. Got to double check your work. The negative 3 to positive 5 goes up by 3 units to get to 0, 5 more to get to positive 5. 3 and 5 gives me a total of 8 when we go up and down. I'm going to save some time on this video. You could go ahead and set up the Pythagorean theorem with a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Plug in a 6, plug in an 8, and solve that equation, which c is going to tell you the length of line segment fg. But the easiest thing to see is this is the 3, 4, 5 triangle that's just doubled. 6, 8, 10 is what happens when we double that really nice, perfect right triangle that goes 3, 4, 5. So I know already from doing this problem before, 6 and 8 for the legs are going to spit out 36 and 64. They add up to 100. Square root of 100 gives us 10 exactly. So take a quick look at the final problem. Make sure our answers are in there correctly. What is the distance between point F and point G? It ended up being exactly 10 units. If you need help as you start moving into the practice problems today, please definitely call us over. Thanks for watching to the end of the video.